So at this time, if you can refer to page six in your packet, we updated, and there's also some handouts on the table if you can't get to page six. And I'd like for Joel Hatchie, our facilities director, and Mr. Papa Nicholas to come forward, and we can bring you up to speed on the project and where we're at and how things are going. And as for as much as I joked around with the students and uh, I gave Joe a hard time, we are. It is an amazing job what they're doing out there, and we have probably the most guys I've seen. And we have probably 40, 50 guys out there working today, whether it was on bleachers, cement, concrete, asphalt, framing, windows, gutters. Uh, everybody's out there, so it's uh, full steam ahead. And uh, we had two significant rains now since the field's been installed, and our flood from and our uh, drainage from the field to the storm trap is connected, and we had not had any standing water or any field issue problems with both of those heavy rains. So um, I'll open the floor to Joel. Uh, with regards to the field itself, uh, the synthetic turf field and, and the field in its entirety has been completed. It's been punched out, it's been reviewed, it's been walked, and those items have been addressed. Uh, we performed some owner's training on that, so essentially the field's been signed off. Uh, we're going to do some additional training next week, and for all intents and purposes, the field's ready to go. Now our goal is just to get the surrounding area complete as soon as we can. Uh, the biggest task is the asphalt um, around the track. We're going to start that Friday and complete it early next week. Um, we had ComEd out there today, and they're tying in power, so we should be able to start testing the lights, the sound system, the scoreboard, electric for the facility. Um, Joel, would I bring up the speed where you're coming at from your perspective working with Jeff Board, the project superintendent? Yeah, it's um, sure it's uh, pretty much daily and hourly now at this point uh, until October 2nd. So um, there's there's you know a lot of details and we're sort of following in after him as he completes areas and turns them over to us. We have our you know our, our installation and stuff like that to do as well. Yeah. Current, I mean, we're still on temp power coming off the, the west end of the building. We've been waiting in combat for a while here, so uh, we expected them out about six weeks ago. They showed up last week for a day, got them back today. They set the transformer today. That was a good thing, and they're going to liven us up tomorrow. Good. So then we'll take the steps to abandon our temp and bring in the permanent service and then uh, start tying in our lights and, the, uh, and everything else and start testing. So, Joke about your first Kevin, whoever, Joel, why don't, you, why don't you set expectations? Uh, the, uh, Kevin said that the day of the homecoming will be 85% complete. So tell people what's going to be done and what it'll look like. Uh, the biggest single item that will not be complete uh, for the first game will be the track surfacing. Um, that's slated to be complete during the month of October. We're going to coordinate that implementation with the district uh, activities. So that's going to go the majority of October. Are you still going to put a protective covering over it or do something? Well. It'll, we're just going to place the asphalt. Okay, we'll that'll be it. Yeah, so the asphalt okay. will be done uh, next week. Uh, we'll leave that alone through the first game, and then we'll, uh, we'll coordinate with the, with the schedule um, for the track surfacing, which striping to take place early November. So that's the biggest single thing. And then some uh, miscellaneous uh, fence mesh around the perimeter of the track. We need to install the track surfacing first uh, before we hang the mesh around the outer uh, fence. So for October 2nd, we're going to use the top rail and the bottom rails of the fence. We'll move them two feet down, two feet up, to kind of serve as a barrier around the track to keep people off the asphalt. Yeah, the idea is if we put that mesh up now, it's just going to be difficult to mm -hmm. place the surfacing. So Got it. that's not the right way to do it. So. And, then, uh, and then the third thing, that, uh, some, some of the landscaping yes, will be done correct. too, right? Jeff? Restoration. We're going to start some sod work tomorrow um, in areas that are ready. Uh, but yes, there will be some restoration and miscellaneous landscape and plannings to do, and then obviously the phase three area. So, so from when I talked to Jeff today, uh, he gave me an update about 1.30. The visiting bleachers south of the visiting bleachers, where that, that uh, dirt has all been graded, so they're going to put sod there tomorrow. Southeast area. Southeast corner. Yeah. And then uh, as soon as they're done pouring the concrete walk by the flagpoles and the sidewalk, they're going to try to get that cleaned up. And then the third place would be by the... Uh, west southwest entrance where the turnstile will be going in. Um, so those would be three main access points. We're going to have some temporary fence set up off of our regular fence behind the uh, athletic building and 
where the grass field and parking lot is to, and with some screening on it so that that can still be a staging area for when we finish up the rest of the work but it'll be somewhat closed off to the visitors for the October 2nd and October 23rd game. And Joe, are we completely done now with the uh, retention and discharge system? Yes. It's all hooked up. Yeah. The pumps obviously are being fed from ComEd, um, but we're able to control water, so everything's tied in. Okay. We'll have a dedication plaque by second. We will have a dedication plaque, two, uh, two dedication plaques in honor of the donation from the Canelli family. And then Nicholas and Associates and DLA Architects split the cost and are donating a dedication plaque to the Board of Education and to the district that will be mounted somewhere in the off the locker room building, acknowledging your, all of your hard work with the uh, project. And Joe, I, w I was out of the city on Friday. Do you know how much rain we got, how fast it came? Uh, I want to say a couple inches. I don't know exactly, yeah. okay. but it was so pretty it, quick. It was about two inches. And it, the drainage mm -hmm. performed yep. really well. In fact, right by the loading dock, the sewer cover was dancing. It was bubbling up. So oh, okay. The field looks great. And if it didn't do that, if it wasn't doing, usually when you saw that, the field would be flooding, right? Yes. Bleacher, both bleacher systems are wrapping up this week. Um, and again, we're going to have a walkthrough. We're going to punch, punch that out, walk it with everybody, address anything that needs to be addressed. Uh, we have a final occupancy walkthrough on Tuesday next week. So, Excellent. Timing of everything is, is pretty good. Roof is complete. Yes, that's also that punch walkthrough has taken place. Uh, that punch list has been distributed. Uh, nothing major, just a few odds and ends, and that'll be addressed before the weather turns. So the roofing project will be 100% complete. And then we're prepping for the next phase, right? To get that up for bidding, right? Correct. No, they're taking cores from yeah, cores, the, cores next for the roof. Yeah. So. Um, if you pay, if you want to pay attention to the <coughs> red, red, green, and yellow Kevin, cap chart, go ahead, Laura. The track surface. I think when we looked at the facility too, uh, John and I were told that it actually needs time to cure anyway. Mm -hmm. The asphalt yes. does correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, trying to finish it ahead of time wouldn't have been in the best interest anyway. Correct. So it's part of putting it in yep. since we we're building it brand new. Right. The only thing want to do it right. <coughs> Correct. The only precaution that I need to get on TV or to the board is that right. in the event October we get hit with bad weather, there's a certain temperature threshold that we can't go below when we're setting that track surface. So as long as we're above 50 degrees, I believe Fahrenheit, and we are okay to set the, the track surface and for that to attach and, and uh, secure correctly to the asphalt and all that. Yes. That's on the. At, during the hour of installation, or does it have to be an extended plus 50 degree time frame? I would say 50, and 50 degrees, I think, is a peak, but we'd have to verify that. Um, we have a certified installer that obviously knows what he's doing, so okay. we'll follow up with him as well. Okay. But history says the month of October is usually, you know, there's an opportunity to get a system in, so okay. we'll follow those parameters. But I thought another thing was real good at the facilities uh, meeting was. We have electronic files of all the drawings, stamp drawings, and everything. So yep. that's our record that will help us out, which we didn't have before. Okay. Training as well. Yeah. Training. So the, the cap log, which is the color-coded log in front of you, is the tracking of our expenses and change order uh, proposals. And although the board approved the, I think there's about a $700,000 change allowance, uh, roughly you can see what we're at. We're at roughly 296 on page three, which is a, uh, a general summary. And out of that 296, 214 of that was roughly the changing of the stone base and redoing all the drainage and uh, fabric and all the undercut. So um, there's been some credits established with that. This does obviously does not account for the 87,000 we received in credit on the stone, um, but we're right around under $100,000 in change allowance. Would that be accurate to say minus the 214 Joel yes but how come that's not reflected here because we see in other lines where we see a credit like there was a credit for 14,000 or like line number four it Laura, says credit the, the credit is reflected on the report I assume Tim's going to go over on the overall budget yeah but if you but look this, at this look at line four I'm it says answer, credit I'm, I'm answering, okay. I, I could have done it either way 
the one, one report shows everything, cost and revenues. This one just shows changes that had to be made versus what we agreed to in the original contract. The, the credit for that wasn't part of the contractor working with, you know, Joe or any of his subcontractors. It was worked out independently, uh, separate from the contract between Kevin and the prior contract. This is strictly work that this is strictly just change allowance expenditures and credits related to our current contractors and the current project. So, so like line four where it says credit here, right. there were right. several lines that had a credit that I don't recall seeing in the past. These are credits oh, that like when uh, if you look at page two, sorry. number 19, so we were able to use um, stone that they picked, took off the field that was the wrong stone from the original field. So 19 is them taking us a $10,500 credit off of that $214,000 <coughs> charge. So because we were found a way to keep the stone on site and use it in other parts of the project. But the, there's been credits on here before, Laura. Right, but I, there are more credits today than there have been in the past. Oh. And so when you tell me that these were credits that were pre-negotiated or negotiated at the beginning with this contract, I'm confused because... No, they weren't. Everything on here is a change that was subsequent to us signing on the dotted line with our contract manager. Okay. And that these are changes versus what was in the original, with, with the contract we have with Joe's firm. Okay. And then we had an allowance, as I think this Kevin said, for $700,000 because we knew there would be changes. So some changes are cost more, some cost less, the debits or credits. Right. The, the credit for the stone that Kevin worked out right. was not between us and any of our current contractors. He went out to the prior contractor and and negotiated a settlement with them because they erred in the way they originally installed it. So that's so why that amount's not in this report, because it's not part of our contract with our current contractors, but it is in Tim's report that he's gonna go over on the, the current uh, budget uh, report for the overall project. Should we put a note though, because this document is on our website and it shows you know, cost, change order cost. There's a comment column after the color column. Should well, we have a comment there that I have says, a suggestion. Why don't we hold that thought until Tim goes over to other report? And I don't know if it's on the website. If it's not, we can put that on the website. And I think it'd be pretty clear to people what the, their, the reports are serving different purposes. Right, because on the, there's also not the 140000 we received from the donation from the Canelli family. Yeah, this is just meant to summarize this is just to keep track of changes. Right, but when you have to look at two different data sources to put the papers together, or maybe a comment after the $200,000 change order to say, see report, to see the other report, might be helpful to say that that change order cost was offset. Well, again, can I make a suggestion mm -hmm. that you hold thought until Tim goes over his report and then see what you think is a good suggestion at that point? Yes, that'll be in the Chief Financial Officer's report. Yeah. I, Down here. Because that, re, the, I think the report encompasses what you're suggesting, but maybe not. Is that okay? Fine. Okay. So we, uh, page one is, for, these have all been pretty standard. They're up to date now. Uh, Joe, any other? Sure. I think the, uh, it's like you see, if you see an R next to a change, so like change number eight, or cap number eight, it was originally scheduled at 17723 to twist the, or to, to turn the storm trap based on the, some of the comments from the village engineer. Now that was revised by 8R and we got that price down from 17 to 1273. And so that's why it says approved. So some of these were cap proposals and then we rejected them or said, you know, some of this needs to be tweaked or Joe went back to the contractor and seen if he could spread some of the work to other, the other contractors and we were able to get some different <coughs> numbers in here. Um, we got the uh, originally 15 was about 18,000 that was to have the water uh, the water station underneath the 50 yard line on the other side of the track so we're not dragging hoses across we got that completed and installed and we got that down from 18,000 to 10,000 so those are savings that we were originally planning on spending 18,000 on the change 
and now it came in at ten thousand, and that's why I see approved. Um, a couple other big ones are obviously nineteen. We got an additional three thousand uh, dollars when we did some calculations with the contractor. Twenty four R with some, some stuff related to the roof deck and some things that Joel had pointed out. Uh, pointed, pointed out. 25 hours related to the roof as well. You notice most of these are going down, which is a good sign for the board. Um, and these are original numbers we received to get some work done and then uh, as we worked on it closer with the contractors, we were able to do some other work internally. We were able to get the numbers down uh, even more under control. Um, the garage work, you'll see that there's number 28, 29. Uh, that should be coming down significantly off of that 15479, we were able to use a local vendor, uh, Brookfield Glass Block and Panel, to do all the glass blocking on the garage, and that was significantly lower than what we were originally estimated by the contractor. We were able to use a local gutter guy to do some of the gutter work on the garage, and so we only had to use a contractor for a coiling door and some <coughs> mason work and demolition on another door. So um, we'll be getting an updated quote on that. And uh, page three, uh, some other significance. Number 38, we had originally schescheduled for about $25,000 of to remove bedrock for the pump station and the, the, the tie-in line from the storm vault to the pump station. And that work was completed. We did encumber, uh, that did entail the removal of some bedrock. and we were, the contractor was able to get that done for about 12, about half the cost. Yeah, that's cap 40 and 40R. Can I make one point? Maybe or maybe this will help as you're thinking about this. <coughs> if you look at uh, line 7, I'm not, sorry, line 9 on page 1, RFP 6 to remediate existing stone base, it was $214,000. And then if you flip to 19R on page 2, you see there's a $13,500 credit for savings related reduction of hauling excess stone. That is encompassed here because it was part of our negotiation with Joe's firm. So originally estimated 215 roughly, but because they were able to reuse some of the stone and give some to uh, Brookfield too, we saved part of the hauling cost. So most of the, a lot of the credits here are credit to what was originally estimated in an RFP and then later on it wasn't but it's within the context of amending you know the agreement we had with Joe so maybe that'll help when what you're thinking it, about the other what does it mean in comments when it says not spread yet it, that's on the statement it just says not we have a separate allowance tracking document okay um, so that the this approved amount has not been spread within that statement okay so, or on our sworn statement one of the two so. All right. It's more for internal purposes. For you guys? Yes. Yeah. We review this every Tuesday. I have one question. Yes. Uh, Kevin, when we took the tour, I believe it's number um, 20, it's in the 20s. It was uh, 27. You, or, you originally were thinking about adding some additional light under under the bleachers for storage yes ma'am so are you still have you abandoned that idea or are you looking for when they gave me uh, so cap cap 27 was the original RFP uh -huh. that then uh, was revised down to uh, six thousand two hundred twenty five dollars which is cap 32 oh, it's down to 32 okay and then we took it a step further as Kevin said earlier everything has a tendency to go down um, Took that a step further, and if you look at cap 42, it, uh, it finalized and approved out at 5,570. Okay. So when you call me on Tuesdays from 9 to, <laughs> we started at 9, and there's no way, and then we just, Joe goes out and looks into some things, then Joe calls Joe, and then they call me, and we say, nope, that's still not I low go enough. searching. We continue to work on, on solutions that can fit into our budget. So how come this one didn't take the same format and then do, like, the um, like, what was that? Fourteen twenty-seven R. You know. That's like because a new RFP was issued. So oh, okay. if you look at um, cap 
27. Right. That's RFP 19. In right. reality, it should go from RFP 19 to RFP 19R to RFP 19R1 anytime the scope of work changes within an RFP. Uh -huh. Well, in, in this instance, we went from RFP 19 um, <laughs> to RFP 23 to RFP 34. Okay. So each RFP, RFP um, there's a there's a cap that, that gets submitted in response to that specific RFP. Okay. So technically you see a couple that all deal with the same change and say not accepted, not accepted, revised, and then eventually accepted. Okay. That's good. I, we just wanted to know if you abandoned that idea. No, we're still That's doing the way it, it should be done. <laughs> um, but we, we ran with this so we didn't have to keep going back and revising RFPs and this and that. So. I was afraid he was going to hand out flashlights to save money. <laughs> 47 is an example, another example that we, we revised 28, which is the garage. That was 15,479. Now we're at 10,000. And you notice I had Joe add the note not to exceed. And I'm hoping to get that down a little further before that's finalized. Mm -hmm. And the, old, the latest one, and this is the final one, because now they don't let me go on that side of the project anymore because they said I was changing too much stuff and we were never <laughs> going to reach October 2nd. But the last thing we did have to fix, we did some, when we were originally doing the budget and working on to, to tighten up some things to get our number into where the board felt comfortable with the overall project, we did do some value engineering where we had used some asphalt for walkways instead of concrete. And now that I'm out there and seeing things being curved and installed and seeing it visually, uh, being a visual learner, um, there's some things that needed to be upgraded back to concrete. It doesn't make sense to have a sidewalk be, you know, half concrete, the middle part be asphalt, and then this, this, the back end of it be concrete. It looks right. like an Oreo cookie. So, um, and also the maintenance of that middle part, which is going to get a lot of foot traffic with no curb and wear and tear for salt or shoveling. Or so, you know, I upgraded a couple of things. So that's why you see not to exceed twenty-five thousand. But there are two or three walkway areas that doesn't make sense to have partial asphalt and then part concrete let's just make it all concrete so it's uniform and it's the maintenance is consistent so this is after October 2nd uh, no that's no, what they got to try to get done before right, October to, so I mean it's a good thing he does his site visits and <laughs> he caught it early I mean yeah we're jumping through hoops a little bit now to do it but long term this is the way to do it and we don't want to have to go back right. remove things it's, it's extra money and at that point you know, you're more apt to say, you know what, just leave it, but this is going to be a better end product, and it's a product that you're coming out. So. Okay. They're a great firm to work with, but they told me if we keep changing things, October 2nd is now going to come the miracle instead of the homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> the miracle at RB. That's, um, that's the new We had to pump the brakes on a couple things, but uh, we're keeping everything, and Joe does a great job communicating back and forth via emailing and writing. We always have the whole team on it, so there are some punch list items we'll fix after October 2nd, but... Is there anything that can screw you up to not make that? Well, I mean, if ComEd doesn't give us power in a timely manner, I mean, kind of beyond the window, but, you know, they said they're coming tomorrow to liven us up. I mean, we need power. We have zero power right now anywhere on that site. So, obviously, once we start firing some things up, I'm sure there's going to be a couple of wrinkles to iron out. Not having power could be a problem, and uh, you know weather. You know weather will will affect asphalt, but it looks like we have a good window this week. So, if we uh, see who we can have reach out or who to reach out to comment to see if they make sure they'll accommodate us. Well, they, uh, we they, made some calls earlier last yeah. week, okay. and that's how I think we got them out yeah. uh, this week. Came out today, and we were told they're going to live up <coughs> tomorrow. So. Okay. more on this document or do you want to say anything about the next three pages in the package? The next three pages are just the RFPs that tie into the caps. So if you understand the caps, it's just more or less the detail of work unless there's something specific that Joe wants to touch on. No. Um, one, two, there's three or four open RFPs that we need to respond to with caps. And other than that, we're, we're pretty current. Well, I, I'm sorry, one other thing, Joe, yeah. and maybe I don't know what you told me the timing was, but when you were giving us the tour, you said you're going to reach out to the contractors uh, to get try to get in writing that they would uh, could keep their cost what they originally proposed mm -hmm. for the you know the work on the 
phase three as we refer to it for next year. Uh, I don't remember what you told me the timing is. Yeah, I didn't set up a timeline. I would think within the next couple of weeks okay. I should have those letters in hand. Okay. So. What I'd like to do is at least get it in writing from, from my contractors that they're going to hold all their phase three pricing. Uh, so when they come back next year to, to perform the work, uh, everything stays the same. Okay. Right. okay. Tim, I know in your report you're going to be touching on the budget for the construction. Do you have that today with you? Yeah. It's in here. Do we need Joe to stick around for that, or do you feel you'll be able to do that by yourself with the board? Well, I can talk about the construction. The Just the budget, part. the financial part? Yeah. Do you, do you mind flipping to that? You, now, why we have Mr. Papa Nicholas here, and then this way the board can see how you and Joe, and his, are you okay with that, Joe? Mm -hmm. This way, before you leave. Marianne, I don't know what page is that, Tim? Tim's report is on 40. I could find Starting on perhaps page 100. Is that what you speak of? That is correct. Yeah, it's a table. So. so we're going okay, over. Okay, starting on page. Yeah, this is the um, the construction financial report that that I put together, and we reviewed this with the finance council. Um, the, the top part of it is the, the revenue that we received. I mean, that, yeah. uh, back yeah, in 2014, we had applied for a state maintenance grant uh, for $50,000 to, to pay for yeah. part of the roof work that we were going to do. Um, and of course, the donation from the Canelli family of $140,000, and then the settlement that we got from Morris of $87,000. That was in this July. Um, Below that are the expenditure items. Uh, we started with the demolition and, and then the bleachers and then broke each one of those uh, components down into the, the amounts that were budgeted for each of the, the contractors. So in, under the building, for example, you know, you have uh, about nine or ten contractors that are a part of the work on the building and that shows the, 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 the budget amount for each of those. Um, and then the billing that we get from, from from Nicholas uh, breaks down bills every month into all of these categories. Uh, so we're, we're, we've completed the, the amounts that were paid in July and the amounts paid in August um, for each of the different uh, components that we identified early on that we wanted to track. Uh, the demolition, the bleachers, the building. So Tim, let's stick on page 100 real quick. So okay. one thing that we, when I first took over as superintendent and a lot of board members present uh, took over as board members we when we were fixing some of the remaining punch list items and some of the problems from the previous construction um, project the 66 million dollar project we didn't we were we were unable to break down how much it cost to build a pool how much it cost to put in the stadium there wasn't a specific breakdown so that's one thing we were trying to accomplish so if I read this correctly just for example the building we're basically is budgeted it should cost 3.5 million 3.553454 correct correct is that including including the change allowance for each of the contractors yes so that's like so that number that's worst case scenario yes so based on then when we're done joe when we're done and you have that allowance tracking document we're able to go back in there for each of these contractors and adjust their number for what change allowances either we agreed to or didn't agree to and all these basically should be coming down, so that number should be less than 3.553. Well, yeah, the, the column all the way to the right shows the, the total amount that's been paid on each of those, to each of those contractors for the building, for example. Okay, so we so wouldn't even have to adjust it. It would just be what, what we originally budgeted and then what originally gets, finally gets paid Correct. out. Correct. Because what we have from Reamer, for example, is just one number that we have from them for the, the allowance. It's the, the, the allowance number is not broken down. We can break it down on a percentage. No, basis. right. I just want. Yeah. I wanted to make sure so the board understands. Right. Three point five five three four five four is worst case scenario. Worst case, correct. Okay. And Joe, when do you see September bills being posted on here? At the end of the month is usually 
at the end of the month you're posting your bill, uh, your bills for that month? Yeah, for example, the August numbers, that was what was approved for payment by the board at the August board meeting. Okay. Okay, so that, that's from so the that's August really July expenditure. So probably July invoices. The July invoices that we, we approved in paid August. In, paid in August, correct. I don't know if you had a chance to look at my comment, but especially since it's going to carry over to next year, it, I think it'd be helpful on here if we show whether an item's complete or not, so that we and then show what's the difference between the budget and you know what was paid to date, so we have an idea of what's left and what's done. So on the first page, one hundred, like you're saying with demolition, the demolition's done. done. So you know, if somebody else looking at doesn't know well we're still going to spend 20 more thousand on that i mean we know we're not because right. yeah because of how we did it but you know because when this year is over this we're still not done with this project so it'd be nice to know at any given time is, is a piece done and and then what's the difference between what we budget and what we spent you know on a ro rolling total and then you kind of have a better feel for what's done and what's left yeah, I can add those. That information. I mean, Kat, that was my suggestion. Kat, well, I think for okay. the Robin, that we could probably black out the cells to the 102 200 or put you know, something so that they realize nothing else is being filled in. And then on the page three, we can put the running total on a complete, right? So that we can see where we're at. Well, somewhere in, the, in that first column, there's enough room for me to put, like, for example, after Robin, I can put complete. <coughs> okay. Then I, would, I would add a column calculate the difference between you know the total column and the budget amount you yeah can put a plus or minus yeah um, under under sure. yes. and then that will help too because of the items we didn't budget that were the miscellaneous stuff right. at the end we get a better feel for it now Tim this is on board book under your financial report and that's where this your change on allowance is also at it's not under the capital improvement so my question is would the board prefer to see this since this is truly the board's document and the overall buds, board's budget? And that could be put under the Board of Education, Capital Improvements, Life Safety, where we have some of the other stuff related to the life safety and the pictures of the vault. This might be a better document to put up there. I agree. Where, where is the credit on this document? On the first page, Board 100, settlement. FY 2016, Total July. Right. Where is it at? Well, Morris Settlement. settlement. Revenue comes in. Eighty-seven thousand. Okay. Okay. So if I were to see that eighty-seven thousand, I just come in and I just—it's a number there, eighty-seven thousand. It doesn't look to me like, oh, because it says revenue, but how would I know coming into this fresh from the you know on the conversation that this offset the two hundred thousand plus cost? And all I'm suggesting is because the community they're not following every single conversation you have every week but if there is a note right here on line nine where it can say um, offset by credit C construction final report okay I could do that and that sure, way that. 10 years from sure. now or if there's a new board they're not going to know this number relates to this line they do if they understand what the reports for it's like one's a math book and one's a science but, book. But, but Laura, they also, 10 years from now, are not going to realize the fact that the reason why we had to spend 210000 was because we had a mistake on the original construction project that we had to clean up that mess. So, maybe so where we, is that noted? It's not. Well, maybe we should have a note. But right here on line 9, nothing here tells me that this is going to be related to the Moore's because it's not because it's not they're independent they're but mutually it, exclusive it offsets the 214 no it doesn't the 87 I mean not within not the really no, not within, the not within report. Joe's report how about using a footnote I think it's helpful to put that that 214,000 I mean when we all came on the board we spent the first six months bringing up documents that were eight years old from the first construction project. I, I don't understand why the, we want, because we this want to document this report here is the one that's showing is the one that we asked for, we expect people to understand what the overall construction is. The report you saw from Joe is, 
his own company's way of showing how extras are affected. The tracking, con- tracking, tracking mechanism. mechanism for the contract price. So in my mind, a better way to do what you're doing, if you want to have, this is the report that's going to summarize the whole project. Put a footnote if you want to put course. footnotes, I suggest we put footnotes here. Okay. Because right? this is our report. We control it. We can do whatever we want with it. If we start doing, you know, the Joe's report is a different purpose. We have to, you know, try to get him to change the way he does his reports. This is our report. This is the one going to, like Gary's comment, is 10 years from now, people want to know what happened here. It should be here. And that's fine. We should put the footnote here. And this is the document that's going to be public on, now when you say it's on board books, is it on the RB website under board tab, or is it on board books? When you go, if you went to today's meeting, you'd see both reports, because we talked about it at today's meeting. But there's a tab under the RBHS homepage. Mary Ann, are you able to pull that up or swap to the internet or no? Uh, no. There's a tab under our homepage where it says Board of Education. When you click on it, about three quarters of the way down, it says Capital Improvements, Life Safety. Okay. If you clicked on that, there are key documents related to just this project. Okay. A resolution that passed the life safety bonds, all the, the bids that were approved, that document, the pictures of the vault, um, the issues of the bond documents. So we can start adding and updating Tim's financial reports with the public and they have one spot to go to check on everything for this project. Okay. So we'll be putting it there. Okay. Joe may update it and we'll update it there. Right. So when Tim speaks again in October, he can update it, take down the one and update that. So let me ask you a question. As we're getting uh, phases done, when we have revisions, you know, I mean, you know, re, uh, revisions on budget proposals in here, should we put that in there too? Like at the end, you know, or have a well, we already have it in the no, form we got you. this and we got that. I don't think we need that yet, okay. In my view, okay. So we're on page 100. Yep, is there further questions on page 100, 101, 102? And we've, we've made notes on a few ideas that are being tossed around as to improvements and footnotes and yes, the 87,000. Thank you. Yes. Thank okay. you. Anything further from this side on this report? Anything further over here? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Let's get back to uh, the gentleman in front of us. And, uh, <laughs> And when the project's all said and done, there's going to be a final pay request, and there's going to be a final allowance tracking document reconciling all the unused allowance money, and every single expenditure will be all listed out. Great. So anybody could go back at any time and see where it went. Okay. Excellent. Is everybody good with Mr. Papa Nicholas and yes. Mr. Hatchy? Yes. Thank you guys yeah. for coming. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Thank you, Joe, for your work. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Joe. We'll see you the next, next item week. on the agenda is the uh, principal's report. And Joel, when you leave, can you can we leave that door open? Yeah, sure. To let people know we have an open meeting. Thank you, sir.